Welcome to Cinema Gold. This is John. And this is Ben. Today we're going to do a review for Alien Covenant. Alien Covenant, the crowd pleaser of the year. The film where Danny McBride is the best thing in it. Prometheus sequel indeed, if anything else. What a piece of shit this one is. Tacked on ending, terrible CGI, some of the worst I've seen since The Rock is the Scorpion King and The Mummy 2. John, what did you think of Alien Prometheus? <laughs> Any of our audience out there that listens to us regularly, Aliens, the second film in this series, is my favorite movie favorite of all time. Favorite movie of all time, John. So... One of mine, top five. Yeah, so it's I'm going in, into this movie with high expectations, that's for sure. Ridley Scott is a d director I really respect. Um, this was one of the two movies I was looking forward to the most this year, and I am completely disappointed. This may be the worst movie in the entire Alien series. It's almost as bad as something like Alien vs. Predator Part 2. It I reminded mean, I, me of Alien vs. Predator. Predator Requiem. But yeah, I mean, there were parts, they, they attempt to make this movie a bit like a horror movie at times, but a cheesy horror movie. I mean, the original Alien works as a great haunted house thriller set in space. Works perfectly. They, they do a great job of hiding the monster, not showing it too much, and that's really what made that film work so well. In this one, everything's on display, and it's Terrible CG, as you brought up. The the special effects in this movie blew the entire time. Nothing ever felt real. And that's one of my favorite things about Ridley Scott. I feel like he usually can make the world that he's presenting on screen feel very real. He, he makes the atmosphere come to life. This movie did not feel real in any scene. It was just so yeah. fake. This would be the fate of the Alien franchise if they decided to turn it into a straight-to-DVD, straight-to-download type of series, where they just said, fuck it, like, no one cares anymore. Here's, here's our budget. Like, the ships looked bad. The exterior shots looked bad. It didn't look like a Ridley Scott movie. It didn't look like an Aliens movie. The characters are so stupid in this movie. I mean, if anyone watched Prometheus, you saw that there was a bunch of stupid idiots in that movie. These characters are even dumber. Yeah, and I'm not kidding when I say Danny McBride may be the best part of this movie, and that's not to, like, sound sarcastic and a knock on him. He really is good in this movie. He's one of the bright spots in it. Probably because it has a lot to do with the fact he's not in, like, the centralized problem area for the first large chunk of the film, and he gets to kind of have his own little thing going on. I was expecting Danny McBride to be comic relief. I really was. So and he was wasn't really. He wasn't. he wasn't, like, laughs. I mean, he was a regular guy. He had very serious tone, but he was also, he did, he did give that little kind of levity and kind of joy to the script. Mahalo, you fucking surfers, you goddamn nerds. Everyone else in this movie, ack. I, I can't stand Catherine Watterson, actress, at this point. Like, I couldn't I stand her in Fantastic Beasts. In this movie, I don't know the direction she was going for. She was a throwaway, forget about, I don't care about her character, until the third act of this movie, and then they tried to make her like Ellen Ripley out of nowhere, and it made no sense at all. Some of the, this dialogue is fucking horrible in this movie, and like, some of it that's trying to be funny from other actors in it they can't sell it they don't know what they're saying and like everything just comes off so dull all these characters are so dull and stupid yeah. stupid just billy, dumb billy cudrup had terrible lines in the film uh damien brashear and billy cudrup's a good actor and he was trying like he was trying his best i, I don't like the, i don't like the direction they took his character i no. wanted him to be a i wanted him to be a different type of character but. yeah other than danny mcbride's character there wasn't a single character i was interested in following in this film. I I did kind of like some things that Michael Fassbender's character is involved in in the film. I was there with you. By the end of the film, it was too much Fassbender. I was kind of annoyed by his character by the end. It was like, okay, we need to move on. I want to talk about Darius Wolski first, and he's the cinematographer that you know. He Ridley Scott uses. He's fucking incredible. What happened to him in this movie? The cinematography was terrible. Did they rush this movie or something? I mean, I know they Prometheus did. came out a long time ago. They did rush it. They rushed it when I think Neil Blomkamp started throwing out ideas about somehow having Hicks still alive and making an alien movie that took place after Aliens and I think that was when he was like no fuck that we need to beat him to the punch because in this movie like finished production really fast and like went through post really fast because here it is already I think that was like at the end of last summer that they were like in that arms race to see who can make get the movie in development and I believe this was originally going to come out in August or maybe even as late as October over, yeah, they, and had, they, moved they, up fucking, to May. they had that much confidence in this piece of shit. Well, Walski shot Prometheus in that movie 
uh, with all its faults, looked amazing. And this one just did not, this one had this sort of carbon copy wannabe look of the same thing they were going for atmosphere-wise in Prometheus. But it was so fast-paced and rushed and con it, it was confusing in the opposite way Prometheus was, where that was a slow burn. You didn't really know where the story was going at all because you were thrown for a loop. You're like, okay, this isn't really an alien movie. This one, they try to jam that shit down your throat to... It's so fucking fast paced that what's confusing is what's happening on yeah, screen. Exactly. Why is this thing here? Why are the why are aliens all of a sudden like this? And how come like and none of it really follows what Ridley Scott originally created back in 1979. Like he's kind of kicking his own original awesome movie in the balls, right? Totally. And and one of the beautiful things about the original film was So let's talk about ambiguity, John. <laughs> well, the the original film had ambiguity and that's what really like not knowing what this uh, engineer or in the original they used to call it the space jockey character was and where it came from where the eggs came from in the ship all those unanswered un unanswered questions were great in the original film now they're trying to answer them with these two films but they're just making it more confusing and certainly more convoluted dare i say it's starting to become episodes one through three where the things that we didn't necessarily need to see but just knew from backstory worked by not seeing them and all that shit's getting spoiled now well another thing you were talking about the pace um i think the original alien super slow burn right um this the, even the opening shots of that film the slow move through the ship the slow pants through the ship you get a little bit a little of that in the beginning of prometheus as well it's a slow beginning with these slow tracking shots yeah. This one just jumps right into it. You don't have that slow buildup in this film, and that was missing. Yeah, that, that's another reason it felt so rushed. It was so fucking, it was cut so manic for a Ridley Scott. Nothing nothing felt like a Ridley Scott movie, nothing. No. I just, I wish people would understand this. We, the people who love aliens, because let's face it, these days when people are making an alien movie, they're thinking, how can I make it? How can I capture what Aliens captured, it, which got people so jacked for? I mean, that was like a benchmark film. You don't have to replicate Aliens and put machine guns in and have people going through corridors with their guns and hearing the little beeps to make a good Alien movie. Think of a new story. What did this movie do to change the game of the Alien franchise? It didn't do anything different. It's people land on a fucking planet. There's Aliens. They shoot them. They die. What the fuck was... What did this progress in any way, shape, or form except for a tacked on ending that has a twist that we can't fucking talk about? I asked you a question, John. <laughs> Answer it. <laughs> no, but don't you Aliens is your favorite movie. You sure. talk about that movie ever since I've known you. I have a but tattoo. You, but you would <laughs> yeah, you have a fucking aliens tattoo, but wouldn't you agree? You don't want to see someone try to do that again. They no. need to try to do something and that Alien 3, even though it wasn't a great movie, tried to do something different. Yeah, I mean Alien 3 I, I like Alien 3. I, there, there's things about it I really like. I, I, I think that uh, I think there were studio problems that, that fucked that movie up. The, the thing about Alien 3 and the first three Alien movies that work so beautifully yeah. is their tone. I think they all have that dead serious tone. Very dead serious tone. And that's what I tone. love about them. But this one's so cheesy and stupid and trying to be a cheesy horror movie at times that it never felt serious. I, I think neither of us felt any tension while watching this film. It never None, felt scary. No tension. The action wasn't exciting. And they exciting. were trying to make it tense. And I was watching it going, man, I'm bored. Like, this, there is no tension. A lot of it has to do with the CGI. Ridley Scott seemed tired and bored and rushed. This CGI in this movie is so bad, it's hard to even explain it with the amount of time we want this review to be. I could go on and on. I've never seen a CGI rendering of a xenomorph as bad since maybe Alien Resurrection, but I think that was even well, better than these. I can't believe how bad the CGI looks in this. No, I can't it believe terrible. it. The creature designs were terrible too. Like, like you mentioned, they're ruining the beauty of Geiger's design. They're ruining Geiger's design. This was the, the dumbest, really, really, really disrespecting of, of his genius yeah. design. And there's these terrible scenes with uh, chest bursters popping out, doing the Groot dance. I don't know what oh, was going boy. on. I mean, I guess that was for comedy? I don't think so. You know what? I think they were trying to, like, one-up the chest bursting scene from Spaceballs. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my raccoon gal. Send me a kiss by one. Baby, my heart's on fire. Yeah, I do. What I wouldn't give for a guy under a table with a stick instead of the CGI bullshit that's just... It can just plague your entire production. Uh, yeah, this was such a letdown from the story, from the, the casting, from the acting, from the special effects, certainly. 
and mostly the directing. I mean, Ridley Scott should do a much better job than this. I mean, he's had some some misfires over the last few years. Actually, a number of them, probably more than he's had good films. Fuck this. This is like. I, I can't even look at this and think it's a Ridley Scott movie. Do you remember in 2011 how excited the idea of Ridley Scott coming back to sci-fi horror, not just sci-fi horror, but how he was saying, oh, this is going to be in the alien universe and it's going to like eventually lead into like alien. And it was just an amazing time to like think about it. It's like when you daydream about winning the lottery, when you buy one fucking quick pick, you know, <laughs> it's not going to work out, but you have that day to daydream about how great it would be and what you would do. Well, the, 2011 was all daydreaming about Ridley Scott fucking making an awesome alien prequel. And then Prometheus came out and it didn't bum me out the way this one did. I was just like, what the hell is this movie? I was like, this movie's kind of cool, but like, it's not really an alien movie. <laughs> I don't feel like these films are ever going to affect my view of aliens because it's separated from alien, but it certainly is affecting my view of alien. Yeah, now you can't. Yeah, now you just can't, you know, go and look at that scene where they're exploring the the you know the space jockey ship and and feel the same way and you honestly you honestly like this movie ruins i would never tell someone to not see a movie i know what it i know it takes a lot to make a film and everybody involved works really hard but i would say if you're like if you're like us and you're either around our age or younger or older or whatever all, i would never say this but i would say this time don't see this movie because i walked out of this movie really upset and kind of bummed out because it it changes mythologies that, like, I personally had in my own mind concocted about, like, what aliens are and why they are and, and, and why they do what they do. And the ideas this one puts in your head, really, they suck. Yeah, and the other thing I would never want to tell anyone to do at this point is to watch this series starting from Prometheus. You don't want to see Prometheus and Covenant and then well, whatever's no, going to come next. But if you're just, doing an alien marathon, you leave out the Predator ones and you leave out these two. Fuck, I'd, I'd watch the Predator one over this. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, Sometimes you just wish a franchise could stay what you remember it. As much as it'd be great to see other stories taking place in those universes, we see what happens when you try that. You can't recreate a Hudson character. He's a one-of-a-kind character. He'll never happen again. R.I.P. Bill Paxton. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? So yeah, if I was going to rate Alien Covenant, fuck, I really think that it's one of the worst Alien movies in the series. So just based on that alone, like my love for the Alien movies, I'd have to give it a pretty harsh grade. The respect I have for Ridley Scott and how much he just blew it with this opportunity, uh, I'm going to go pretty harsh with like a three. For me, as far as how I'm going to gulp this fucking movie... I just, I was so let down by this movie in almost every way, and I felt it really early on when certain things happened that I, that I think were supposed to be taken seriously and supposed to be intense, and I was chuckling. And then I fell into the thing I always do as an editor. I paid attention to the pacing of this movie, and it's horrible. It's absolutely dreadful. It's a total mess. And all my fears were confirmed about its like crappy slasher movie vibes here and there, and then dumb as fuck scientists and you know just so whatever i'm gonna give it a 2.5 because i kind of hate this movie i don't get any joy giving this movie a low score i really don't i'm not la i'm not laughing about it i'm in mourning because chris cornell died and because alien covenant sucks and, and the alien franchise has officially died yeah rough day rough day <laughs> so anyway that's gonna do it for us uh, sorry to inform you guys uh, hopefully if you guys don't listen to us uh, and go see it anyway you do find something enjoyable out of this movie uh please leave some comments in the comment section below for us if you have a case as to why we're idiots and we just missed something in this movie that made it great please let us know but at this point i can't recommend this even to fans of the alien series please click like and or subscribe you can find us on twitter facebook and instagram until next time this has been this is john we drink your cinema Fuck! <laughs> I drink it up! Fuck everything, but fuck you the most. Fuck everyone, but fuck you the most. With a big rusty pole or a splittery post. Yeah, fuck you the most, fuck you! Fuck old school, fuck new school, fuck not cool, fuck too cool, fuck him and ironically lame. Fuck giving advice, fuck trying to be nice, fuck you and you know who you are. Fuck everything! Fuck you the most, fuck everyone, but fuck you the most With a big rusty pole or a splintery post Yeah, fuck you the most, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you.